After taking down the Warriors to win their 10th straight game, the shocking Grizz continue to blaze through the top heavy Western Conference. With a dominant point guard tag team of John Moran and Tyus Jones, Desmond Bain playing like one of the NBA's best shooting guards, the Grizzlies may have the second youngest roster in the NBA, but as you'll find out, it's a group of players that are wise beyond their years. Amidst this win streak, they've taken down top teams like the Suns, Warriors, Nets, Cavaliers, along with the middle of the pack LA Lakers twice. So this video fully delves into how the Memphis Grizzlies underrated attack keeps dominating. Before continuing, only 11.3% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for both those platforms. Since November 24th, the Grizzlies are first among all teams in net rating, defensive rating, win percentage, rebounds, steals, and blocks. Over that span, Memphis has 20 wins, while the next best team has a measly 15. We'll get to how the Grizz took down the now number two seeded Golden State Warriors for a second time this season, but first, we're going to key in on a few of the team's standout contributors, leading off with the explosive Ja Moran. In the painted area specifically, Jaws averaging 14.8 points per game, which is by far the highest mark of his young three-year career, up from 10.7 in his rookie campaign and 10.6 in his sophomore year. But the actual reason why I bring that up is because those 14.8 points give Ja the third highest scoring average in the restricted area among all players, only trailing a pair of seven-footers in Giannis and Jokic. It's pretty easy to forget that Jaws listed at 6 foot 3, 174, but the man's incredibly the only point guard in the top 15 in paint points. The springiness that Ja Morant has in his bag is a trait that simply can't be taught. Most intriguingly about Jaws' playing style is how he perfectly utilizes his natural abilities. Don't get me wrong, he'll often attempt to make a Kodak moment out of whoever stands between him and the basket, however, it's the locomotive pace in which Morant plays at, his shiftiness, how he changes speeds, that's what actually distinguishes him from your average floor general. Jaw droppers capable of exploding off the dribble in pick and roll scenarios, getting shot blockers anticipating a drive all the way to the basket, only to put them on Dancing with the Stars after whipping out a vicious Manu Ginobili-esque Euro step and soft finish. The utterly electric, soon-to-be first-time All-Star can relentlessly push the pace, swiftly getting Memphis transition opportunities on a play-to-play -play basis. On possessions in the half court, after getting a handoff, Jaws' tight, pristine ball handling skills allow him to hit the brakes on his matchup, proceeding to corkscrew his body around rim protectors for polished finishes. Likewise, to get space for floaters, which is probably Jaws' go-to shot at this point, Man does the same thing, elusively pumps the brakes, and gets his defender right where he wants him on his hip. That wherewithal and improvisation, even when attacking downhill with a full head of steam and with a defender draped all over him, that just goes to show you that Ja isn't at all reckless with his hops, but that he knows how to perfectly weaponize his speed and athleticism. To go along with that IQ utilizing his hops, it helps that Morant has exceptional body control to go along with a soft touch around the bucket. Jaws the face of this franchise, but you gotta give credit to the Grizzlies' front office, who've surrounded Morant with a more than adequate supporting cast. Desmond Bain's 42 games of excellent two-way play have seen him become one of the NBA's best three-point shooters, and what makes him even more of a villain for opponents is the fact that Bain's become one of the NBA's more solid shooting guard defenders with his strength and lateral quickness. Desmond, along with the currently sidelined Delon Brooks, who isn't shy about getting triples up either, plus Jaron Jackson Jr., who's an elite stretch big, those three primarily give Morant a good amount of space to work with in half-court scenarios. Steven Adams, who started at center in all 40 games before hitting protocols, may offer no floor spacing at all as the man's far from a shooter, but the Kiwi is a mean screen setter and elite offensive rebounder. The Grizzlies wouldn't be fourth in the West without Tyus Jones, the fundamentally sound guard out of Duke University, who was the Grizzlies' savior in the 12-game stretch without John ja Morant, where he fueled Memphis to a 10-2 record. He may only post decent 8-point and 4-assist averages, but Tyus currently leads all NBA players just ahead of the Warriors' Andre Iguodala, along with the Suns' Chris Paul in assist-to-turnover ratio. Jones is a stable force running the offense, and his style of play nicely mixes things up from what defensive coverages experience when trying to stop Morant, 
As Ty is displayed in the big win against Golden State, where he was 6 of 6 on threes and a game high plus 20, he's more than just a primary playmaker. The man has some legit shot creating prowess when he finds a rhythm. I went more in depth on Jaron Jackson Jr. in my last Grizzlies video, which I'll leave a link in the description to, but after the Warriors game, Triple J now leads the NBA in fourth quarter blocks. Man's the only player in the NBA with 20 plus blocks, 20 plus threes, and 60 plus rebounds in the fourth quarter this year, and he's shooting 42% from three as well. Meanwhile, for a consecutive string of games, Zaire Williams has been the best version of himself in the NBA that we've ever seen. Williams has the ability to spring up for lobs off the bounce with his timing and length, as well as pop back for triples and create a bit of offense off the bounce for himself. Zaire was picked 10th in last year's draft for a reason, and how he's coming on as of late for one of the top seeds in the West has been a great story to watch play out. The 20-year-old rookie and product of Stanford is averaging 11.4 points on 52% shooting from the field and 45% from three in the month of January. Let's hope Zaire can avoid a high rate of inevitable rookie mistakes and continue to be a big piece for the expected contending Grizzlies. The Warriors and the team of the hour in the Grizzlies met up in a showdown displaying two of the NBA's premier squads. It's pretty incredible that the two teams in the 2021 play-in are now two of the NBA's heavyweight teams roughly nine months later. After a dull two and a half minutes, the game started to live up to expectations, with the Grizzlies flipping the switch offensively. Ja was attacking at will, and whether it was a dish to Zaire Williams for a corner three or a bucket for himself, Mann was utterly dictating the flow of the whole game with his drives. Meanwhile, Triple J's activity was massive defensively as he racked up two steals and a block within the first six minutes of the game. However, the Warriors cut a 27-14 lead late in the first frame as the Grizzlies left the first quarter with a 28-24 lead. The second frame would then escalate into a three-point contest with Pius Jones, Zaire Williams, Jaron Jackson Jr., and Desmond Bain all being participants as they combined for five threes in only the opening four and a half minutes of the quarter. Zaire also took the roof off FedEx Forum with an alley-oop jam from Morant, but the overpowering Warriors again closed the frame on a really strong run, cutting the Grizzlies' lead from 18 to eight as the score entering the locker room was 59-51, and Memphis had a lethargic opening to quarter number three as Jackson Jr. got his fourth foul early, missed the rest of the quarter, and also the young glove Gary Payton II hounded Morant full court, which impacted angles in which he could attack. At the same time Morant was adjusting to that aggressive defense though, Coach Taylor Jenkins received a massive boost from Brandon Clark with his interior play. A steal from 2019's NBA Draft and Clark continued his incredibly efficient play recently as he scored 14 points on 6 for 9 shooting, also tallying 2 blocks and a steal. The final period remained damn close, with both teams really going back and forth the whole way through. Ja Morant and Zaire Williams had another alley-oop connection, giving the Grizz some much-needed momentum. Triple J also came up huge on the glass in this frame, pulling down a handful of second-chance opportunities. The criminally underrated Tyus Jones drilled two huge triples to extend the lead, but debatably the brightest moment of the game for Grizz fans, and simultaneously the lowest moment for Dubs fans, was Jackson Jr. swatting Curry on one shot, and then Klay Thompson the next. Triple J continues to prove he's a defensive phenom to be reckoned with. After some heroics from John Morant and stellar lockdown defense, Memphis closed out the Warriors and pulled out a 116-108 W. Whether you're a Memphis or Bay Area supporter, you can't not be somewhat appreciative that this big-time matchup between two top dogs in the association lived up to the hype and was incredible to watch. Memphis is now tied with the Utah Jazz for the number three seed in the Western Conference. They're two and a half games back of Golden State for second and three back of the Phoenix Suns for the best record in the NBA. So can the Grizzlies legitimately compete for a spot in the NBA Finals and get through the West? Best answer in the comments earns next video shout out. The top five commenters with the most shout outs by March 21st receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is John Will, who says, I think the most fascinating thing about the 76ers is the fact that Tobias Harris is not playing very well and their record is still as good as it is. Pause to read the rest of that take from John. Thanks for every amazing answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.